everybody. Um, here to talk to you about um, this incident that happened with this 310 over at John Wayne Airport here a few days back uh, where they had had a right engine failure at takeoff. And uh, we've flown uh, the 310 for several years. This one here was our latest. It's a 1969 310P. And we flew a 1955 Cessna 310 for over a decade and a B-55 Baron for over a decade. And as many of you know, we had an engine failure in our Bonanza and put it down in Kansas at about 800 feet AGL. Um, we've also had on this particular airplane here at rotation a left engine throttle cable failure which resulted in about an 80% shutdown of the left engine and we also had a oil pressure loss in the right engine, complete oil pressure loss in the right engine of our 1955 310 during cruise. So we've had some incidents and you always hate to hear about these things. Um, fortunately, uh, those folks did uh, survive and they're in stable condition, uh, this incident at John Wayne uh, Airport. But just wanted to talk to you about uh, a few things and show you a couple things. And here is a video of, of this uh, crash and it's pretty dramatic. <laughs> And then I want to have you listen to this ATC recording, um, which is kind of interesting. So we'll listen to that. We can we can discuss it here. Twin Delta two hundred seven, runway two, right line of point. Surface takeoff. Surface takeoff. Two hundred seven. Oh, hey, we got a mayday. We got a mayday. Twin Delta two nine seven, mayday, mayday. Two hundred seven, K thirty plus. Twin Delta two hundred seven, thirty plus. I make it back to the airport. 297. 297, Roger. Right traffic, she's your right, you clear to land. That's a 65 Bravo, make a full stop. Full stop, 65 Bravo. That's a 3 0 Papa, make a right 360. Right 360, 3 0 Papa. That's a 3 8 Delta, just extend your cross, win about a mile, and then uh, continue to make right 360s. Drive 360, that's a 3 0 Papa. That's a 3 0 Papa, continue in right 360s and televised. Right 360, televised, 3 0 Papa. Six five Bravo, make this a full stop, please. Three six one seven. Uh, good day. Two four point zero five. Good day. Seven seven eleven. Your uh, gear appears to be up for two nine seven. Yeah, I know. We're we're still trying to get a little altitude. I'll put it down when I get the final. Right. Two nine seven. I got. I lost my right engine. Two fifty heading out. Southwest just forty. Forty cents. We just had a aircraft instead of your. You're going to be. Okay, so that was the, the last uh, uh, call from the pilot. Um, and in looking at this video, there's a couple things we want to look at. If we look at the airport layout here, and we're not here to investigate it. We're just here to talk about it. And this is by no means to, uh, you know, <laughs> give some something in, in replace of the NTSB. But we're just looking at observations here. And we know that uh, he was coming in to either 20 right or left. Looks like 20 right. Um, if you look at Google Maps here, the airplane ended up right around in this area here from what, what we can see and just uh, looking at the pictures. And so uh, in going back to that video, I was going to show you a couple other things too. You can see here that uh, you know the airplane was low. We have a right engine failure turning into the bad engine. So one thing you always want to think about in a twin is raise the dead. That's like something you should just like should be programmed into your brain and I could just tell you that when you have a failure there's nothing like a simulated failure versus a real actual failure because your heart literally falls out of the bottom of the airplane and you just can't believe it's happening like it's literally uh, shocking um, but if you are fully prepared and I just over the years flying with my father is just something you just talk about over and over and over and over and you just think about constantly continually and when we had our failure it was uh, so much of it was instinctive that when I look back on it I remember not even thinking just doing um, and you because it's just programmed into your brain you know feel the airplane nose down you you know airspeed everything that you could possibly think about what's around your surroundings where you're gonna go where you're gonna put it um, and so we just I just wanted to talk about it and because maybe if we talk about it it can it can help other folks but in watching this video you can see the angle of attack here and so 
um, not even not even close to being over the freeway as far as the threshold of the runway is several hundred yards from uh, being over the fence line here. So, um, and in looking at photographs, we don't know really if it was a partial engine failure. The prop doesn't look to be feathered in the right engine. But um, at this, you know, uh, low uh, altitude and also airspeed, once the Dutch roll starts occurring where the, where the good engine is overpowering the bad engine um, and it starts to go, the, really the only option at that, at that particular case would be to shut down the good engine. And so, and we don't know what happened here, but um, we do know it didn't roll inverted, which definitely saved their lives. And so you can see the uh, high angle of attack there. And now, now we've got a stall. And um, so even though it's flat and level, we just have no airspeed. And uh, this is similar to what they speculate happened with that 1974 Turbo 310Q that crashed in Riverside, California. They had suspected possible engine failure. And, uh, and a stall. Uh, and we do see that the gear was down and the pilot had reported that he was going to lower the, lower the gear once he had the airport made. So somewhere in the sequence from uh, the, the, the first call to ATC there um, to the second one, which seemed like he might have had things handled, seemed fairly calm, you know, something happened. And so if we look at where this airport or where the airplane is in relation to the runway um this base leg was pretty tight and so you know once you get that angle of attack as far as your bank goes um if you're putting any kind of rudder in um you you're turning into your bad engine i mean it that's you know that is a scenario that's a, a tough situation you know and can be deadly and so i'm not like i say i'm not here to judge or anything like that we're just talking about it so if you have a situation where you're, um, you've got a, an engine failure, low altitude, you know, get the airplane cleaned up, get above blue line and just fly straight. Just fly straight ahead, get the airplane climbing, get it stabilized. If you can't get the airplane climbing, if you're in high density altitude or whatever it may be, we've had situations in our 310 where you know when you're taking off, if you lose one engine, you've lost both engines and you just prepare that you're flying a single engine airplane. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to, to discuss that. If you have any input, you know, please let me know. I was going to show you this uh, Taiwan plane crash here. You can see this commuter plane. They had lost an engine taking off, and they identified the wrong engine, and they shut down the good engine. And so it's an example of if you're... Uh, if you're rushing into making a judgment, it can be even worse. And in this case, um, you can see here how that ended up, which is uh, tragic, yeah, obviously. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about that with y'all and, um, you know, just wish you all the, the safe flying in the world, obviously. And, um, and hopefully maybe that'll help. But just, uh, you know, study up your procedures. Always think about it. Be aware. Thank God these folks are okay. Really glad that they're fine. We're going to make a full recovery from all reports. And uh, we'll talk to you all later. So take care.